What's up guys? Mike here with another episode of Boost Brothers Garage. Today we are going to begin building my struggle motor. So we've got the block here. I've got most of the internal parts of the engine all here ready to measure before we actually do any assembling and I'm just going to quickly go over that today so you guys know how to do it and can get kind of a behind the scenes look at what goes into building an engine. Okay so the first part of building a motor obviously is getting the machine work done and on this motor we sent it to the machine shop we had them deck the block here to get this as flat as possible for good cylinder head sealing. Uh, obviously they cleaned everything up as well. They sent it through the hot tank a couple times. They sleeved the cylinders for me. Uh, they also bored it out and that's part of what we're doing to get the extra displacement for it to be a, a stroker motor. Again, it's gonna be 2.85 liters. If you look in here, you can see the machine work down at the bottom of the cylinders where they had to bore this out and then fit this flange sleeve in. The internals of this motor are a little bit odd and that's the reason it's called a hybrid stroker. In order to do this hybrid stroker, you're actually using the pistons from a small block Chevy. These are 4030 pistons, so it's a 30 overbore from a standard small block Chevy. On top of that, we're also using the rods from a Mitsubishi 4G63 motor, which I believe is for the Eclipse. So these pistons and rods, along with offset grinding the crankshaft, which I'll show you guys a little more of in the next video, increases the displacement from 2.5 to 2.85. Also, you're using off-the-shelf parts instead of custom-made stuff, so it's a little more cost-effective, and they're easier to get as well, so it's a win-win. Whenever I had the machine shop do this work, I also had them go ahead and zero balance the rotating assembly, and if you look, the bottom of this piston just looks standard. This was the lightest piston out of the bunch. The rest of the pistons have marks on them where they were machined. So the machine shop went through and made it to where all the pistons were the exact same weight, which confirmed with my wife's cooking scale. You gotta do what you gotta do. They also balanced the rods, and you'll notice here, this one, looks normal. This one and all the other ones have been machined. So once again, they take the lightest rod out of the bunch and they make the others match. In turn, you get all of your rotating assembly to be the same weight. We're able to remove the balance shafts from this motor, uh, free up a little bit of horsepower, probably not much, but you're getting rid of a balance shaft belt. Uh, it's just making things cleaner and simpler for the long run. So today, we started measuring all the components in the engine to make sure that we're gonna have the correct tolerances for when we assemble it. The first thing we do is we're gonna measure the bore of the cylinders. And the way I do that is with this inside bore gauge, just spring-loaded, put that inside the cylinder, and you rock it around until you find the widest possible part of the cylinder. You can lock it down and you can go back 90 out, do it again, and then you take it and you use a standard micrometer to come up with your measurement. All of these cylinders came out pretty much exactly the same. The machine shop did a great job and they were 4 0.0305. This is a build sheet. This is where we're recording all our measurements. 
And the next measurement we took was the diameter of the pistons. Once again, we're using a micrometer and we're going to find the widest part of the piston here. We're going to take that measurement and we're going to put that on our little sheet as well, which all the pistons were right at 40250. That gives us a piston to wall clearance of 55 thousandths, which is exactly what this motor is supposed to be. It's a little bit higher than normal, but it's supposed to be that way because it's a boosted application. At least that's what the guys that came up with this motor design told me it should be. So that's what we're doing. So we have weighed all of our components. We've made sure that the machine shop did in fact zero balance everything. We've done the measurements on our pistons and our cylinders. We've confirmed our piston to wall clearance. And that's pretty much everything we could do for the top end here. In our next video, we'll be going through and we'll be measuring the diameters of the journals on the crankshaft. We'll be putting the main girdle on the motor with the main bearings in there. We'll be measuring the inside of that to get our clearances. And we'll also be putting bearings in our rods and measuring those as well. So that's what's gonna give us our important clearances for our crankshaft. Once we have that, we can file fit our piston rings and we can start assembling the motor. So stick around for those videos and we look forward to hearing from you. If you have any comments, make sure to put them down below. Check out our social media feeds and like and subscribe. Thanks guys.